as I would go around to different client engagements, as soon as I'd walk in I, and when the opportunity presented itself, I'd say, hey, by the way, do you guys serve coffee to your staff or to your customers? And uh, what kind do you have? And uh, you know what, I've got some of the good stuff out in the car. Do you mind if I bring some of that in for you to try? And I was doing that so often after a while, I realized the good stuff, the good stuff. I keep calling it the good stuff. That's our brand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Chris Jacobson is the founder of Good Stuff Coffee a coffee company devoted to helping former foster youth by directly hiring them, paying them a living wage, and giving them transportation. But most of all, helping them get on their own feet during the time of transition from foster care to the real world. There are a lot of nonprofit that will help these young men and women, you know, with mentoring, with school and education, with finding housing and food and all of those things. But what they really need, where, where everything fell down, is they need a stable, steady income and a reliable car, reliable transportation to get to and from work and, and to and from school if, if that's what they're doing too. So that's where we come in. We kind of bridge that gap. Today, let's sit down with Chris and hear his story about how and why he got started in the coffee business. We'll also learn where the Good Stuff Coffee got his passion for foster youth. Let's dive right into today's American Game Changer. Chris Jacobson, welcome to American Game Changers. Really happy for you to be here. Thank you, Nick, it's a pleasure. So, you know, one of the first things I gotta tell you straight up, uh, I'm not a coffee drinker. <laughs> I don't drink a lot of coffee, but your company really interests me and the aspect that it's a company and it's involved with doing work with the foster care. What really brought you to that and what drew you to, I guess, this company? Because this wasn't originally your, your deal. No, I, I didn't know anything about coffee about seven, eight years ago. I didn't know anything at all about the plight of the former foster youth either. Um, I'm a business management and process improvement consultant. So I'm a, I'm a workflow guy, I'm an operations and logistics guy. And one of my engagements was with a group out in Carson and they were a uh, nonprofit that was working with a for-profit coffee group that was again doing, doing this mission, which is to help kids once they've aged out of foster care to become permanently self-sustaining. And that's, that's the mission we've adopted with Good Stuff as well. But Throughout that engagement, I was working alongside these young people and God just kind of gave me a heart for them and I learned about their plight, um, which is within two years of aging out, uh, up to half of them will end up on the streets or in jail. And so this group was doing what they could to, you know, prevent that to the best of their ability, you know, one, one young person at a time. And so God just kind of uh, appealed to me on that. And then the coffee business, I didn't know anything about coffee, uh, but it's a fun business. I learned I was, I was back there watching them roast. I learned about the, you know, the uh, production and uh, distribution. And um, near the end of the engagement, uh, they, they really didn't implement uh, all the stuff that I had advised them to do. I'm just a businessman, general business. And uh, I, th I thought, you know, I can still help you guys. Why don't you just let me, I'll put up an online coffee store and I'll sell it, I'll sell the product and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'm a networker, so I'll, I'll pitch and promote it for you. And so they let me do that. And as I would go around to different uh, client engagements, as soon as I'd walk in I, and when the opportunity presented itself, I'd say, hey, by the way, do you guys, serve coffee to your staff or to your customers and uh, what kind do you have? And uh, you know what, I've got some of the good stuff out in the car. Do you mind if I bring some of that in for you to try? And I was doing that so often after a while, I realized the good stuff, the good stuff. I keep calling it the good stuff. That's, that's our brand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. When you think of the good stuff, that's us. Uh -huh. So nothing better than the good stuff. And uh, so I, I put it all together in September, officially September 2018, I got a couple of investors together so we could uh, get some commercial grinding equipment and other things going. And I uh, got us into Sprouts. Uh, we were in one Sprouts store in Tustin. I found a local roaster that air roasts, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Um, and we had our brand and we, we found another roaster to do K-Cups and we were off and running. So wow. that's how it was it's born. Amazing. I, the name itself, the good stuff, I, I'm just, I think that's so catchy. I think that's like, you. if you think of good stuff, you know, I, I want to get the good stuff. You mentioned before about the foster care and how it's all, to, and about how many kids are, when they go through it, once they're done, yeah. they kind of, you know, end up on, in a bad place. Yeah. Why do you think that is? And wh what happens? 
Well, I have two kids. Uh, they're, my daughter's 26, my son's 24. And, you know, they had every advantage growing up, a loving, married couple, parents, and, you know, and never separated, never divorced. And uh, we were there for all their stuff and, and helped them with homework and, and just loved them. And these kids that are raised in foster care, now the, the, they're varying degrees, you know, of, of, of this experience for them. but. Uh, a lot of them are bounced around to so many different homes and they, they've had so many different adults that are either, uh, some of them are, some of these foster parents really care about the kids and they're not in it for the money, but there's some foster parents that are just in it for the money and they get so much per child and when they age out, the money stops and it's, right. they kick them to the curb. If my kids were kicked to the curb at 18, they would have struggled mightily and they had 100%. every advantage. Mm -hmm. and these poor kids, you know, a lot of them don't have the education, they don't have that background, they don't have the nurturing, loving family. Well, I don't know your, but yes, at 18, if I didn't have <laughs> some family support, I would have probably, you know, I was going to school and like still, you know, call, like it's expensive. You, you've had one person that you went from foster care that's working. Tell me a little bit about that story and how that's been, how that's all worked out. Yeah, uh, so his name is Tahari Jackson, and Tahari's a great kid. Uh, he's a great young man, I should say. He's 26, uh, maybe 27 right now. And uh, he's been with us a couple of years now, two, two and a half years. And um, uh, as we were growing Good Stuff Coffee, which by the way, I'm, I'm a consultant. This is a labor of love that I was just growing nights and weekends, you know, and God seems to be blessing it. And, uh, you know, we got to a certain point where the sales were enough where I felt comfortable saying, okay, we can bring somebody in and start paying them. Uh, by the way, our, our story, the Good Stuff Coffee story, our mission is that we hire them. We're for profit, we're not a nonprofit. Yeah. We're for profit, we hire them, we help them to, uh, by, by paying them a $15 an hour rate, which we were doing before the mm -hmm. minimum wage increase. And, <laughs> and um, our, our goal is to build enough uh, revenue so that we can get them working full time so they can support themselves, pay their rent and whatever else, and lease them a car and pay their auto insurance. Because wow. what we learned in that, in that initial engagement was there are a lot of nonprofits that will help these uh, young men and women to, uh, you know, with mentoring, with school and education, with finding housing and food and all of those things. But what they really need, where, where everything fell down, is they need a stable, steady income and a reliable car, reliable transportation to get to and from work and, and to and from school if, if that's what they're doing too. So that's where we come in. We kind of bridge that gap. Right. So uh, I, I got to the point where we had enough revenue. It was just me at the, at the beginning, mm -hmm. just, just uh, doing it all. And, and so I got to the point where I thought, okay, I can bring somebody in to, to put the labels on the bags, to pack out the coffee, to do pickup and delivery. And um, I didn't have enough for full time. So I called a friend of mine who runs a company called Doing Good Works, Scott Henderson, and they, they do good works. They're wonderful and they help former foster youth and they're in the printing and packaging industries. Um, and I said, have you got any young people working for you that you just don't have enough hours that, I, I've got some hours, you know, maybe 20 hours a week at the most uh, where I can supplement their income. And, and he said, sure, let me introduce you to Tahari. And that's, that's how all that started. <laughs> so in Tahari's story a little bit, how he grew up in the foster care and uh, he, he, he comes from Florida. Mm -hmm. and he has uh, brothers and sisters that were also in the program and um, he did not have thankfully the horror story but he did get bounced around from several uh, different uh, to d several different homes growing up and ended up out here but he's he's pretty well adjusted and he's got a full-time job now and he's doing demos for us wow. uh, as kind of a side gig a supplemental gig at this point and he presents himself very well and and he's well spoken and and he's a good people person he likes people mm -hmm. um, and so, so uh, we, we have, we're in 27 different Sprouts locations now. We need to do demos so people will get to know the brand. Yeah. And so now we have uh, a whole lot of opportunity for Tahari to go out and do some demos. <laughs> yeah, but you know, even with the foster stuff, I mean, even on a deeper level, it seems like you have such a, a, a like a good spirit of like <laughs> wanting to try and help. Where did that all, why? Where did that all come I, from? I really don't know. I, I grew up, I'm, I'm a, 
California native. I was born in Anaheim, raised in Tustin, mm -hmm. and uh, lived in Tustin for 28 years uh, until we just recently sold our house last year. And um, the community, we enjoyed the community life. We'd go to the concerts in the park. We, we knew our neighbors. We'd hang out and, and uh, you know, celebrate things together. And, and it was just kind of our nature to do that stuff. So I, I, I don't really have a event or something that triggered that, mm -hmm. that I can point to. But, um, you know, it, it all goes back to just, you know, God, God tells us to be good neighbors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> When I first heard the story, you know, to me of the the foster and working with that and working with them, a part of the company, I think that it kind of that's what we need to like kind of look for is the solutions, you know, of how do you combine like the private sector and some of these, you know, nonprofit, but also like helping the community out, and it, it, it's it goes hand in hand in all this stuff, in my opinion. Yeah, and it, I, like I said, it wasn't my brilliant idea. It's just, uh, you know, God exposed me to this, uh, to these young people. He exposed me to the coffee business, and they already had the concept. You know, I just copied what they were already doing and, and built this, you know, in a different geography, and God seems to be blessing it, and yeah. we'll, we'll see where it goes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to have to start getting into coffee and uh, <laughs> letting you know. What I think <laughs> we, 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 we love to hear back. I can tell you, you know, of the, you know, thousands of people uh, that have tried the coffee, I can count on one hand the people that said they don't like it. Well, I'll for sure support it and tell people to support it in the sense that you guys are doing a lot and helping. I love the idea of working with foster kids and hopefully you can get more, more kids out of foster care to help them help you guys and help them get jobs once they're done and age out. and. Um, I think that's a very special story in general. Thank you. Cool, thank you so much. My pleasure.